hello E-Rank. Uh, yeah, we are live without the intro. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, um, so hi. <laughs> hi E-Rank. Welcome to another Thursday's edition of us live, our Q&A with me, Pam Duthie, and him, not Starla. We have Brian again. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I think most people know you, but if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Brian. You'll see me a lot throughout the, the E-Rank group and all of the other Etsy groups. Um, I do a lot of the beta testing of E-Rank's new features. A couple of years ago, I was a technical writer and I use E-Rank for the past five years and haven't looked back. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If you're in the Facebook group, you'll see Brian there probably more than the rest of us. He's really he's really cool on there. Basically, know? I spend way too much time on social media and I like just helping everybody. So I'm everywhere. Yep. So it looks like let's just check. Hey, Deb. Did we actually go live? Uh, De Debbie's there. Um she's saying hello with the funky intro music. Did the intro play while we were speaking? Play. You were you were talking oh, for, while the intro was going. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. It did because last week, right. Sorry guys, we're, we're technical talk while we're waiting for enough people to get here. Um, but ba basically it's a new feature on the system and it played blacks us out and plays the intro, but today it didn't black us out. So I thought we were live and we and we apparently weren't live. We're live, just not visually. They couldn't see our beautiful faces. Oh, guys, you're missing out. We're so amazing. <laughs> Hi, Irina. Hi, Amy. Hi, Woodcrafter in your pocket. Hi, MNC. <laughs> it hey, yeah, seems like we've got a cool load of people here. Hello, Deb. And we ha we did have a few people before we even got started. So I've hopefully got your questions. We're about to get back to them. And we have a question. We always have a post on Wednesday in the Facebook group for advanced questions. We have questions from there as well. So, yeah, if don't know if it's going to. It's going to be a busy one. We've got a few people in here. So if you get your questions in, but if your questions missed or we don't have time for you, then you can always sign up to the Facebook group, link in the description and leave your question on the Wednesday post and we'll make sure we get to that. And we have been having a few problems with YouTube. So if the YouTube stream drops, join us on Facebook. You'll we're, We'll still be streaming there. But also don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Exactly. Do all the YouTubery things. So let's let's not curse it. I think the stream's looking good. We, we've had our glitch for today. Um, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> all right. So we've 139 people. I. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi 139 people. I know. So and five likes. So guys, I I think we should get at least 25 likes before we start answering your questions. That's not me being... We're, we're just going to sit here and wait. Exactly. Sit in absolute silence. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm absolutely terrible at that. Uh, what we'll do, we'll head over to Facebook where I've got the question up. First of all, um, Mary Steed asked us, when it says my tags are duplicated in E-Rank, does it mean if the category is stitch marker, I should not put stitch marker in the tags? Same for key rings or other categories. Should every tag be different from each other? Which is actually a pretty cool question. And to an extent, Etsy have answered that in their handbook. Um, I'm just trying to remember where it was. I think it's the What's ultimate game. Sorry? It's in the Keywords 101 document. See, he's even better than me. This is cool. Um, so basically they say your categories and things like that work like tags. So if your item was in the category of rings, you don't need to duplicate with the word rings as a tag. But it does then go and say that if your item was a silver ring, you could put that, and that was a keyword phrase you were aiming for, you could put that into your tags. So you don't need to double up, but it really depends. Something like stitch markers, you've still got some space for some extra words. Um, I was 
popping in the keyword tool and there's things like cat stitch marker or crochet stitch marker or knitting stitch marker, whichever ones of those are relevant. Not entirely sure what has 20 characters because I can't spell that quickly in my head. But if it's relevant, then you could absolutely. Um, but if you won't be penal. If you have too many tags, um, so you have 20 tag ideas and you need to cut a few, you can completely cut whatever's in the category because that's already part of the search term. But if you're looking to create an exact match, then it's useful and it's useful to have it in the title because that's what people are seeing. Yeah, absolutely. You can can and should duplicate up your most important things in the title, especially if it's something like um, stitch marker. If that's what your item is, it has to say what it is in the title because that's what the customer sees. So the title's for the customer as well. And you won't get penalized if you repeat it in your title if you said if you were in the category stitch markers and you said stitch markers in a tag you're not penalized it just is a waste of space you're just not getting the so, benefit of it exactly so like brian says if you are hurting for space in your tags absolutely you don't need it if your listing is working and ranking fine and getting views leave it alone um but also if if you've not got enough tags quite brian's amazing for being able to find hundreds and thousands of tags quite a lot of the rest of us struggle when you get to about 10 we're like i've run out of words what i tend to do sometimes is if i'm working on something and i really want to remember what i was trying to rank for you can save it in e-rank and stuff in your keyword lists but i like to put those those keywords right at the start of my tags so i would duplicate up just because i've got a terrible memory so it helps me remember what i was working on exactly and if you are short on tags you can use the keyword tool to come up with with ideas when you scroll down you can use the listing helper um, just type a kind of brief description about your listing and it'll throw a whole bunch of tag ideas at you that you can mix and match with and play around with and ask your friends and family ask people on facebook say what would you call this item if you were looking for this item what would you call it and those are perfect keywords to start playing with as well exactly there's always extra things you're thinking asking what but the i love our listing helper tool because that uses ai to just spit out random things that you might not have thought of not everything's relevant it's only an ai tool it's not necessarily perfect but check it what the tags it's to the keywords that it's talking about have a look at the search data there and go oh there's an interesting one um and as Etsy advises us be thinking of who could, who would be wanting to buy it what kind of style it's in the colors the materials all these things can work as tags as well the and synonyms of the product yeah, there's so, so many. So, yeah, I mean, Brian's, my chair makes the most awful noises. And um, Brian's absolutely right. There's usually hundreds of different words. So, for those last few tags, if you can't think of anything, just put in those random words that might be relevant. Don't. If they hit and you come back in a month or two months, check the stats to see if those words are working. And if they are, perfect. And if they're not, then maybe at that point you can come up with some other words that people have been searching to find it. Exactly. It's a good place to experiment and see what works. Exactly. Right. <clears throat> so let's circle back and catch the questions we got before we were even live on air on YouTube. This is before they disappear from my screen, basically. So Debbie Gartner, if you're still in the chat, we have, she has a couple of questions about share and save tracking and links is there an easy way yet to see which of your items got credit on share and save beside hunting and pecking in finances uh yeah in your orders it shows right there next to the well it doesn't mind it should you have a little what color is it yellow or something uh green it'll be i believe it's green yeah green and it'll yeah. say share and save right on it that's if someone places an order if someone's just clicking and didn't make a purchase, um, there is no way to see that information, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not like a tracking link that we can really see what's what's going on to see if your social media is working or something. But you'll you'll see if you get the credit and sneaky 
sneaky thing that I've just discovered because the one that I checked at, um, I knew this last week as well. This was a returning customer that messaged me and asked, where's the link to your listing? So I gave her the share and save link because it's a shorter link and it was easy to grab. And I got credit for that when I sent her to the listing through messages and you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. I mean, you're not, it's, it's not not going to get you into trouble if you use the share and save link in messages because it's an easy link to grab and if you're on the app and stuff it's it's already formatted that way but yeah it was just a bit of luck i was like i shouldn't be getting credited for that but thank you Etsy. <laughs> i mean it is possible that 28 days before she had clicked on a share and save link and 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 you just happen to send the link because it because when someone clicks on a link it is valid for 30 days that's true no you're right she could have come from there there's no there's no way of knowing what they've credited it to really yeah so that's a good point hey linda yep um, it's brian c that's me <laughs> yep that's a... See, I, you don't even need me everyone's so happy to have brian it's so nice <laughs> but there's no live without you Oh, I know, because I have to push the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the only reason. <laughs> um, and the second part of the question from Debbie was, I understand how to create, share, and save links for my whole store and for individual listings. How do you create, share, and save for a section in your store? I don't think you can do it from a PC. I think you can only do it from the app. Yes, in the app, in the app, you're able to. Uh, on a computer, there's no direct way to do that. Um, but what you can do is go to go to your section, and in the address bar at the top, just change where it says www.etsy.com/shop/your-shop-name, and then there's going to be all that stuff after it. You want to keep all that stuff after it but change the beginning part to your shop name .com slash and then everything that was after that. And that that's actually a share and uh, share and save link. Yeah, every single URL that starts your shop name .com is a share and save link, basically. Exactly. But it, it is a bit of a faff, but absolutely everything you share from the app is formatted the correct way um even like if you're sharing to your social media and stuff they're all formatted the right way so that's pretty cool yeah very convenient and i personally have had a lot of luck with the share and save program hopefully everyone else has as well it you save four percent of the fees or you get it back and until the 15th the whole 6.5 percent you get back it's amazing no exactly is whatsoever yeah, I don't see any downside to it. I know some people are wary of it, but honestly, I wouldn't be. If you're sending people already from your social media and stuff, you might as well make the saving. I mean, it's an incentive to send people to Etsy instead of to your own standalone website, because that's what a lot of people started doing. They started creating their own website because then it's cheaper. I don't have the transaction fee. I still have the payment processing fee. I don't have the transaction fee, though. And this is Etsy's way of saying, no, no. For only 2.5%, you could send them to us. And now it becomes worth it. Exactly. It, it's a win-win because Eatsy wants new people to come to Eatsy. Because if you bring people in through your links and they buy from you, they might become a regular Eatsy buyer. So that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's hopefully a win-win for everyone. And definitely up until the middle of the month it's more than worth it and <laughs> just now when you're not getting charged so exactly. yeah i really need to get on that i keep getting distracted by other things so. yeah the only <laughs> the only reason that i've come up with to not be on it is if you are in the affiliate program if you if you're actually an actual influencer and you have a lot of audience and you point people to different products then you're better off in the affiliate program because then you benefit from anything that people purchase um but if you're just your own shop and you're only posting your own links share and save i still have not come up with a real reason to not be part of the program it's just money sitting on the table if that's what you're doing yep and with the affiliate because i'm i'm in both <laughs> if you're sharing someone else's link 
you can't use a share and save link. Nobody can. Like if I posted a share and save link to Brian shop, he would get the credit for it because yeah. there's no way of tracking that I sent the link. So if I was sharing other people's stuff, then I would use the, the influencer link. If I was sharing my own stuff, then I would share my own link, my share and save link, basically. Exactly. Yeah, it's all about it's all about finding the other little avenues of paying less fees or making money through Etsy and the affiliate program's great, but the share and save, it's been it's been wonderful. <laughs> well, yeah, and Brian's definitely high enough volume to tell you when when something's worth it or not, <laughs> definitely. Exactly. That must be when that's working, that must be saving a good bit. So <laughs> No, like normally it's thousands in listing fee or in in uh, transaction fees but this brings that down by quite a bit and it's just it's nice any little saving <laughs> anywhere you could save is extra profit in your pocket to to put back into your business or do whatever you want to do with take a vacation absolutely yeah and i think it hopefully encourages people as well as i say i I get distracted by shiny different things and I haven't been doing to my shop what I should have been doing to my shop. But there was in my head, I was going, oh yeah, well I could totally do a push about gifts, a push about Valentine. You know, I could push a bit more, but I'm very bad and I haven't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had plans. This year was going to be a year and then I got distracted thinking about other things. But I hopefully it convinces other people to to push a bit more, to build up their social media um, yeah, even, even, even if you're a smaller seller, every little bit helps. If you're paying, if you're paying only fifteen dollars in fees instead of twenty, that makes a difference. Absolutely, hey, it's money in your pocket. An extra five dollars is it's your money. Yep. Um, here we go. Corgi Best Pal is asking a. Best seller design with the text Merry and Bright has some of the tags Farm Fresh Truck, Believe Shirt, Cousin Crew, Santa Shirt. Please explain if these keywords are considered relevant. Um, I assume you're looking at other people's listings and trying to see if if their listings have relevant tags. Um, it really depends. Uh, we can't see the shirt, so that's it. But a shirt with the text "Merry and Bright" sounds like a Christmas type thing. So a Santa shirt, yes. Cousin crew could be something relevant to them. Um, you know, like their followers. That is a cool thing. If you build up enough of a following that your followers have a name that you give them, and they go looking for that name, that's you've really got your branding and your social media on point. Like Swifties. Um, Oh, exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. If well, like like alphas. If you're if you're a star, a star. <laughs> that's it. But that's yes, if you have. Some... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool. So, but we can't see if they're relevant. We we don't necessarily know what's relevant for that listing. But you can't look at other people's listings and just go, oh, they've got all these tags, therefore I must copy all these tags, because it might not be relevant for you. As, as we said, I don't know what Cousin Crew is, but if it's like Swifties, if it's their tribe name and has nothing to do with the T-shirt, then no, that's not relevant for something you make, but it might be very relevant for them. So... They could yeah, also we... have copied that from someone else and just assumed that it was relevant. The same way that you're wondering, is this relevant? They could have just copied it and not not cared one way or the other. If you're using terms that are irrelevant, you're really just wasting space. You're not going to get the clicks from that. So, Yeah, that is such a good point that in plenty of places, some people have given terrible advice to just copy the tags of best-selling things no for many reasons <laughs> firstly as we've said it's not necessarily relevant to you it might not even be relevant to them that's a very good point but the other thing is it's a bestseller which means that that listing and that shop has a very high score on Etsy Etsy really likes it it's got good customer experience it's probably got great reviews so it has what I call like more ranking power it can rank for keywords that are bigger, have more competition 
than your shop can. So if you just copy their tags, you will not show up in the same searches as they do. You'll still as small... the same searches just on page 1,000 instead of page 1. <laughs> exactly. You'll not turn up anywhere decent. So as a smaller shop, we have to, yeah, be inspired by them, but find our own niches, find our own little footholds to get into. Exactly. Yeah, just copying someone else's keywords does not guarantee success at all. It's it's a good starting point if you can't come up with anything. It's good to kind of look at what they're doing, kind of take ideas from that. But if you're just going to copy someone and try and expect the same results that they're getting, assuming their results, you don't even know if they've even sold anything using that keyword. Um, but if you're just assuming that you'll get business because you're using these great keywords that someone else uses, that's that's just not how the algorithm works. It's not just if because everyone can't be in the first position on the first page and just by copying someone unless you have the clout unless you have the sales history unless you have the traffic stats unless you have the um customer customer marketplace score all that type of stuff you're really not going to to rank the same but it's it's a great starting point to kind of figure out what people are searching for for that type of product if you sell something similar yeah, it's not a bad idea to look at their tags at all. Looking at other people's tags is a great thing. And sometimes you might see things that be like, oh, hang on, that's, what was it, Farm Fresh Truck? Their t-shirt doesn't have anything to do with a Farm Fresh Truck, but it looks like a really good keyword. So I'm going to make a shirt that has Farm Fresh Truck. I, I don't... and. We're not given advice to take these tags. I've not looked up the keywords or anything. I have no idea if anything is copyright, but you know, it's an idea you can look in and go, hey, I could make something even more relevant. Their tags, their keywords are a bit not good for their listing. So because even a bestseller, their keywords might not be good because they might be bringing in all their own traffic and they might not be getting anything from search. Or they might just have one keyword across all of their tags that is actually good and the rest are not actually doing anything at all. You know? Exactly. That's those those few lucky shops that are on the first page for wedding ring. Doesn't matter what the rest of their keywords are. They're probably doing well for wedding ring. So there's no point trying to copy them. <laughs> <laughs> they just obviously have very awesome products that people like. Exactly. I suppose it's very similar to looking at whatever casting Jason Momoa is looking to do when he's looking for his next role and going, I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply for Aquaman and all these other things. And why am I not getting any roles? You have to start on the um, start TV. Looking like Jason Momoa. I think everybody should aim to look like Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> But but yes, the, there's <laughs> there's a lot more to it than just copying what the big the big bugs are doing. Exactly. Um, but snooping at them is good. It's also really can it can be cool to look at their social media or look at their reviews and things to see what the pain points are. If customers are saying, "I love this, but the material's not the best. Can you make something in better material? I wish it came in green. Can you do something in green? You know, see what they're, what money they're leaving on the on the floor there. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to find other ideas is by looking at other people's products and going through those reviews, seeing what people are actually looking for. Yep. Exactly. All right, that was that was all our before stream questions. Yep. Um, uh, oh, now I'm going through all the all the people pointing that, out that we started very loud. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I have no control over that. Um, <laughs> um, I oh, yeah. Um, see, Amy's saying, I will just do this just now. I think we, Brian mentioned it as well, but just make sure. Didn't realize that we'd continued on Facebook last week. Occasionally, technology sucks um and things happen so if anything happens we should be dual streaming to facebook as well so if you lose us there's links in the description for the facebook group but fingers crossed <laughs> hopefully the start was our our, our mistake for the week <laughs> and the resolution um, seems to be keeping up so that means we're probably good 
<laughs> yeah, don't curse it. But I, um, many years ago, I worked in a company packing light bulbs, which is random. But at the start of every box, when the bosses weren't watching, we would break a light bulb just to get it out of the way. <laughs> Probably not the best way to do things, but I always just feel like, okay, the bad things have already happened. That's it out of the way. <laughs> We've all just worked some really random jobs. It's crazy. I think my worst one, oh, and we were paid nothing, but you know those stencil books that you get for a painting and stuff? It's just like loads of stencils. Yeah, my job was to poke the middle bits out of the stencils that the machine hadn't cleared properly. Okay. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's great being a student in the summer and you you just take any job that's offered i worked at a bottle cap factory one summer and as a student and it was just i just looked at them and made sure that they were centered like the printing on the thing was yeah <laughs> it's fun isn't it <laughs> fun when you can't trust computers it's great <laughs> we take the machines jobs <laughs> um okay let's dive into the questions we've got and guys we have another half an hour so get your questions in um but Grizz fam scott i'm good this is not fair like i usually just leave stylus to say all the names because i'm terrible um has anyone noticed when you're shopping on each scene something says local it's not local I live in Vermont and the shop's located in New, Z New Jersey. Is this a glitch? Has anyone seen this? I've I've seen this and that that is a glitch that's happening. They're they they some they they play with the locations a little bit. So I'm in Canada and sometimes across Canada, all of Canada will be considered local. They do that because in Europe everything is so close. If you're in Italy versus Spain, those are two completely separate countries, but if you're in if, if you're looking for something in Italy, it's close to you. And so that would be considered local. If you're in Spain, something in Spain will be local. In the U.S. and in Canada, it's so vast that we see each each province or each state or each territory as something completely different. But if you're in the U.S., then U.S. is local. And that's what that's what they keep kind of going back and forth for, because they're trying to make it work for for all around the world. So the same the same thing work for the UK as works for the US. And unfortunately, it's not a one size fits all kind of world when it comes to, to size. Yeah, I, I suppose local is pr sometimes people would count local as it's in the same country. But yeah, yeah that's that's a very european way of thinking of things some um, some countries are a little bit bigger than we can imagine so Most yeah states are larger than every country in europe <laughs> yeah pretty much well i think someone someone told me but from the closest bit of the states to the uk is closer than going right across the states yes. which is like yeah i can't even imagine that <laughs> crazy and yep. people drive that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess all you can do is give Etsy some feedback that you would prefer local. If you're buying local, you'd like to buy in your state. Um, I think everybody's a bit a bit different with, with what they consider and local. Sometimes that is working properly. If you're in Texas, it'll only say it's local if it's somewhere else in Texas. It won't say if you're in Austin, then that's local. They'll say all of Texas. Um, but but they keep going back and forth and so it's a glitch that you in the us were seeing what the people in europe are supposed to be seeing but then there's places mm -hmm. like in canada where ontario for example is bigger than all of europe combined <laughs> <And so laughs> local here is not actually local i'm showing off <laughs> like 28 hours or something to drive to the other side of the province it's ridiculous oh but it's like that in the highlands of scotland as well fair that's because it's not straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's it's very small, but the raids are special. <laughs> they are special. <laughs> I was on holiday with my mum last year, and we were laughing about Highland Miles. And basically, we were going to trying to find this restaurant in the next village, and the signpost said five miles. The rest of the world would say that's five minutes. Two hours later, we we're going. Where is the <laughs> probably? 
possibly I'd got a bit lost, but you just and that's why no. most of the world stopped using miles. Oh, <laughs> is that makes sense? Oh. Nessarine, sorry if I've said your name wrong. Does duplicating a listing and saving it in a gift chef section get a boost from Etsy? That is a good question, but as as Brian, I can see his head going. <laughs> you won't get a boost, but Etsy have sort of been advising that we should do this if we have giftable items. So. A lot of it is just that you can change the tags to more more gifting and that kind of thing, have it in different sections. The advantage is there is a new listing boost, which is only, it's only a minuscule boost, but it is a little bit of a boost. The disadvantage is that when one sells, the other of the exact same product does not get a boost versus the one that does sell gets a boost. So it's very possible that your product can be doing really well but only one of the two does really well because as it gets sales, it moves up in ranking while the other sits still. Yeah, it's definitely a new and interesting thought that Etsy have given us um, that if we have items like, I know I have items before I got Star Seller, Etsy used to say, oh, good job for gifts. And you have certain items that are purchased by people as a gift a lot of the time. So you could say, okay, I'll duplicate that and I'll put that in a gift section and direct people, hey, if you're buying gifts, here's four or five items that are you know, super cool on gifts. Yeah, so. and I'm recommending that with the new gift mode to have, have them across separate sections or have a separate gift section. You won't get a boost from that, but if people are looking through your shop and they go to the gift section, it'll be there. So that's kind of a boost. Yeah. I wonder actually, just thinking out loud now, how Etsy's picking items for gifts. It's AI and human curated, but I wonder if they are looking at items that are picked off my customers as gifts as well. Mm. That might be an interesting way. I don't know how we can figure that out. But... No, but we'll come up with a way to test that and <laughs> yep. Um, uh, Linda's saying she got a share and save credited through Etsy messages as well. Interesting. It's this is one we can't test. If Brian was right that they clicked on something else and then messaged us, but it's Never interesting. Until they start giving more analytics about it, there's no way to actually determine where that click happened or when that click happened. It would be so nice to get full analytics on that. That would really help <laughs> with the Not social media and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can but ask them. Ah, oh, Chris is wanting to know more about Brian. What I, do you sell? Do you sell? I spy 3D printers. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole row, row behind, and there's a whole bunch more that way. Um, I am Cursed by Design on Etsy and website i think we have over thirty-two thousand sales on etsy at this point and which hands that and twenty-one thousand on shopify and yeah just 3d printing all day and night they're off right now because they are very loud when it comes to a microphone so i timed it so that they were all finished for now but yep those things are going 24 hours a day and that's that's one of the ways that i know what's going on with etsy is i am on etsy and spend way too much time reading and figuring out what will or will not impact my shop and so that's where a lot of this knowledge comes from oh cool um right we're getting some yeah it looks like we've lost youtube again i do not know how that happened um <clears throat> yeah um i'll just see if i can drop a message Okay, everything was looking good, and it seems like the stream dropped out. Yes. <laughs> We're still on Facebook. We've got 20 people watching us on Facebook. Um, so fingers fingers crossed more people will be able to find us. But, yeah, it definitely looks like the stream dropped out. And so um, you are watching. Just uh, accept those people that join just to, to get them into the live. Exactly. Yes. Um, 
In fact, can I get the link for the live without... No, I'll probably make noise if I do that. We, <laughs> we just won't do that just now. But yeah, um, if somebody on the live in Facebook could leave a link on the YouTube video for the Facebook live, I'm forgetting words, that would be awesome. <sighs> in, yeah, I, it is in the featured section at the top. Um, is it? I'm seeing it up. There. I know the the question links. Hopefully, somebody else will will get it. Um, right, but we we carry on. Uh, I wish there was something came up on the screen that told me this. Um, uh, so Amy asked, um, "Do you save four percent of the fees, or do you only get charged two point five percent? Four percent of." 6.5% is almost nothing. You get 4% of the fees back. So you're still charged the entire 6.5% um, on the total and on the shipping as two separate charges and on gift wrapping as well. You'll see those as three separate charges in your payment account. And then you'll see a refund in your payment account for 4% of those fees. Um, so you only end up getting charged 2.5%, but you're, but the overall, the, the, one of the reasons they do that is so that the payment processing fee is for the entire amount and any taxes that you pay are on the entire amount and then they refund you um, the 4%. Yeah, but it's it's the four percent total. She's right. If they if they charged us two point if they saved us two point five percent of six point five percent, that that is not worth it at all. So <laughs> yes, exactly. um, so I, when, I wouldn't. While the promotion's running until the fifteenth, you get the entire six point five percent back, so you don't pay any transaction fee. You you yeah, pay sorry right. you pay a transaction fee and then you get refunded for the transaction fee. There you go. Exactly. Yes. So I think you already said, but you still, it's not free. You don't get everything back because you'll still have your payment processing. But if you're se selling on your own website, you'd have to pay that anyway. Exactly. So. And that's the, that's the benefit that Etsy's trying to give us and the incentive to use um, Etsy and, and point people to Etsy instead of to our own websites. Yep. Um, so Linda asked, if you run out of tags, is it helpful to put your shop name in a tag? 100%. And you should anyways, um, even if even if you have to kind of be creative with your tags, it's always good to have your shop name in your tags because not everyone searches the same way. So someone could actually search for your shop name and not click on the shop button. So they're looking as just a normal search. And if you don't have your shop name in your tags, your shop, your listings will not come up. So once you, once you start having more and more brand recognition, you do want your name in your tags. Yeah, it's cool when you start seeing people looking for your shop name. That means they know about you. But the other thing that can do, if you're choosing which listings, you don't have to put your shop name in every single listing. So if you pick which ones you put your tag, put that the name in a tag, then when they search for their shop name, you've curated which listings they're going to see, which is very handy. Exactly. And the advantage is as well, if someone searches for your shop name and you're not using it as a tag, then other listings will be coming up, like other people's listings where the words do match somewhat. And so you could potentially be losing a sale if people can't find you. Yeah. Um, I, I have definitely found in the past, and my shop name's Ben McFuzzy Lugs. There's nothing that sounds like that. Yeah. But they do have, if they don't have any context at all, they actually do pretty well because they are showing similar shops to mine in terms of selling the same things. Okay. So I've seen that a couple of times, and I was like, right, I'm getting my tags in because their work's better than mine, and I don't want them getting found instead of me. <laughs> It is possible that they were using your shop name in their tags. I checked. I I I, I had an angry and I went. <laughs> I I had a nasty email all planned out. So you stop using that. But no, they weren't. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, so Jeff asked. Here we go. In the POD Etsy biz, Etsy's most popular character category per e-rank is art and collectibles prints digital prints do shoppers interpret digital prints as digital down downloads 
um, I don't think shoppers mainly look at categories unless they click through from like the home page. But... Which not many do, which is why the search algorithm had to get better and better. Um, generally, when people are looking for digital prints, they're if they're looking for digital prints, then they would not be looking for digital downloads. Or at least that's that's how I would search. If I was looking for a digital print, I would expect it to be a print of something digitized, um, not necessarily a digital file that's being sent to me that I can print. But you never know the the mind of the shopper. Yeah. Um, if if it's a if it's a digital download, do they still show up on the search showing that it is a digital download? I know they definitely used to. Um, no. Um, and that's what confuses a lot of people. If you're not putting in your title or you're not having a little badge or something on your first image saying it's a digital download, people could purchase it thinking it's a it's yeah. an actual product that's going to come to them, but it's not. Yeah, so that's, I would, if Etsy aren't showing it, I would definitely in your first picture say whether it's physical or digital download, make it clear in your title, make it clear in your description. But shoppers shoppers search for what they think they want and they click on things and they don't read much so we've got to make it as clear as possible they they expect the item to be whatever they were wanting <laughs> rather than whether they're being sensible about it so i know a lot of digital people do have trouble with confusion either way but if you're doing print on demand um, definitely in your images because both will be side by side, digital and physical. You want to make sure just like if you're selling digital, you want it to be clear that it's a digital item when people are just scanning, you want to do something with your image so that people know they're going to be receiving a physical item as well. Cause that could be what they're looking for. Yep. Um, and over on Facebook, Facebook user, sorry, I don't know who that was cause the software doesn't tell us on Facebook. Uh, what's the best practice for the new gift section? We don't know, <laughs> really. This is still uncharted waters. They're still they're still rolling it out. They're still um, they they the documentation that they've given us so far is not exactly clear and it's very vague. Um, so we actually don't know. Um, as as time goes on and probably as we get closer to august september when gift season kind of kicks into full mode that's when we'll start seeing more articles from etsy staff in the forums and potentially in the um the etsy seller handbook that guides us a little bit more of exactly how to use it because at that point in time they'll know how people have been using it and and kind of fine tune it so at the moment yeah <laughs> it's a bit of a guess the only thing i sort of I'm thinking and this is just me thinking but when you go into any of the personas there's a few different categories it'll say it, it'll have some kind of a title and when you click on to see more it takes you to the search page for whatever that title was so if you see things that are really relevant for your items and they look like a keyword that not many people are using bung them in as a tag it can't hurt to try yeah. um, but only for the relevant ones and I would say for personas that are coming up often when you look on the home page. But we we know very little <laughs> about it. Eatsy's told us very little. And at the end of the day, the gift section is for buyers. It's to help it's to help buyers and it's to help the really bad buyers that have no idea and are just here to browse. It's not to help the people that know what they want to buy. Which so. is why they're pushing it for the Super Bowl. <laughs> and as as you said it, it's it's for the guys that are terrible shoppers we, we think so. <laughs> yeah we have no idea what we're looking for and gift mode is to help us that's it it's just like click two buttons that'll do yeah <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> <You're not wrong. laughs> um <clears throat> any idea why you aren't rank got rid of the top tags tab while in the keyword tool um yes okay it, it's not got rid of uh firstly i believe we combined the i can't remember what terms we were using for everything but the top tags were 
the key, the tags that other shops were using, and we had related keywords, which were what buyers were searching for. So we combined them all together into one. Yeah. So it saves you having to click through different tabs to be able to find different things. But we have re we now have a little button where if you just want to see the tags, you can click on the little button in the keyword ideas tab and you'll only see the tags. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was to make it easier to have everything all in one place, basically. So it, it still is the top tags, but it's kind of mixed with everything else as well. Exactly. Uh, Chris, I see a lot of top listings with keywords that have unknown stats. What does this mean? It means that E-Rank just doesn't have the data for it. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means because we're not polling every single person on YouTube. There's what, 90 some odd million buyers on YouTube and 8.8 .8 million sellers. And all of them, they're, they're, e rank doesn't get the information for Etsy for that. And so this is a poll of... I, I don't know what the number is. It could be 2 million. It could be 10 million. I'm not sure what the number is, but based on those, those people, the, the search data wasn't good enough to actually give accurate numbers. So we just say unknown instead of giving a number that we don't know, or we're not sure about, we will just say unknown. So it could be that that focus group did not click on or, or did not search for that term, but it could also be that one or two people have searched for that and it's just not enough data to really correlate results. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not one of the top search terms. We know that it could have have searches. If it's very relevant to your item, go ahead and put it there. I would say don't try and build a niche on entirely just that keyword that has unknown stats, but definitely don't be afraid to use it. I, I'd say kind of don't be afraid to use any keyword that looks relevant, whether it's got massive competition or it's got a load of unknowns across the board, still use it and see see what happens. And at that point, it's also good to use the Google Trends button at the in the last column because it's possible that people are searching on Google for it and not Etsy, but it's also possible that it's, it's just one particular small town that you're targeting and no one in the focus group is in that small town, so nobody's using that term. But they would be using it on Google because Google 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 gives uh, actual results because they are Google. Um, so use terms that are the most relevant, and even if it's unknown, that doesn't mean none. It just means we're not sure. Yeah. Um, so Amy's asked, did you know when you go into E-Rank on tablet or mobile, with a desktop view when you scroll down it automatically takes you back to the top of the page um yeah can you hit the feedback bottom button on the bottom right um and let our team know that unfortunately e-rank doesn't have a mobile app um so you're using it on the browser so it's not going to be the perfect experience but i know the team do try and make it as best as they can. If you let them know which tablet or which phone you're using and which version of it, we can check that the best we can. I do use it on my Android tablet from time to time and haven't had that issue. So it's possible that it's on the iPad. I haven't used uh, use that. Um, yeah, just submit feedback because the developers, they watch that and they will know a lot more than we will. Exactly. I mean, from, I, I don't know much about these things, but every different phone works differently, every different tablet. So unfortunately, the, the team do the best they can, but you're not going to have the best experience on a on a phone. Um, we're, we're, we're doing what we can, but yeah, the phones get more complicated. Um, if you have a listing that's been up for a couple of weeks that hasn't got many views and you found some keywords that may do better, should you go back and switch some keywords or leave it and make a new listing? Um, I guess, when do you know you need to adjust a listing or leave it to see how it does? Uh, yeah, that's... The listing is new and you're sure that nobody's searching for something, then go ahead and change it. You're not really hurting anything because it's only been up for a short period of time. Um, 
but generally if you are a slower shop expect 60 to 90 days before you start seeing real results before etsy starts showing you to the right people um that that's where um helping etsy along by pushing it on social media and getting the proper target audience to view it because then etsy knows who to show it to and so you get results a lot faster if you do have a, a higher volume shop than a few weeks to 45 days is all you really need to know okay these keywords are not working but if you're listed if if you usually don't get many views on your listings then changing them up constantly will not help you it can actually hurt the listing even more yeah that's it exactly it depends on the size of your shop to what what we do i know it's really sad when you've fallen in love with an item and you've created it and you've put it up and you sit back and you go come along sales this is a good one it doesn't necessarily work like that we we're just talking in the facebook group earlier i've had one of my current best-selling listing took about a year and a half to really build up it was making sales and stuff but they kind of it snowballs until it you know the perfect storm of all the right things happen so if you have a high volume shop you can fiddle in the weeds and stuff if most of your listings are getting a couple of views a day anyway you don't have enough data to make any decisions so i would absolutely make a couple more listings um if you can it's only 20 cents so that's the the cheapest way to test anything so yeah don't don't be afraid I, and definitely what, what brian said there is if you keep fiddling with it if you say oh that keyword didn't work and you take it out and you put a new one in it's he's not getting a chance to test it to figure out what you even what your item is it doesn't know who to show it to so yes if if you're quiet don't don't keep fiddling i know i know everybody thinks we all think oh it's just i've got the wrong keyword and if i put the right keyword in suddenly i'll be getting 200 sales a day it might happen but it's it's not quite so likely <laughs> um things take a wee while to build up um oh, we've got to the got to the point where we lost youtube <laughs> um they're all facebook users at this point yep we're back to facebook users and thanks to everyone who who found us here just as well i gave the warning um i've seen other sellers using my shop name in their tags is that allowed generally no but no but um you can you can send them a message tell them to stop you can send an etsy a message etsy will not likely do anything unless you have your shop name trademarked um and that's when they really can't use it but again they still can use it you just have to go after them um so technically no they're not actually allowed to do that but it's very difficult to stop someone from doing so yeah and sometimes it's not worth it like if i went in and stole brian's shop name he's making way more sales than me i'm not going to benefit from that anyway apart from to annoy him a little bit which is tempting to do that anyway <laughs> um but you know it doesn't benefit me at all because he eats he knows when people search for that they want his shop so they're going to show him more than me i would already so, be dominating the search results exactly yeah so so while it's, it's a pain, code, it's yeah. It's like I'd I'd send them a message if it's people using your shop name, um, and also, sadly, when you it, it's a sign that you're getting popular, unfortunately, and when we get popular, people will try and copy us, and sometimes we just have to put our head down and stay in stay in our lane and just be like, well, it means I'm doing good, because trademark ip copyright and everything are are all wonderful but at the end of the day we sort of have to fight them in court so <laughs> i would prefer just to beat them just do better than them yeah but again if, if you see someone doing that report them to etsy and just see what etsy says it's possible that they will kill the listing but it's also possible that they won't do anything so come in with no expectations and if they do something that's positive yeah, if it's a prob problematic shop, if Etsy get enough complaints from people about it, 
then they could just get rid of it. So. Exactly. Yep. You already have a no. A yes would be a great surprise. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Um, is our quality listing score going to tank if we add all our items twice as per Eatsy's advice for adding it in a gift section? Doesn't hurt the listings that already have the good quality score. Doesn't hurt your shop to have some listings that aren't selling because your quality score is not divided up through the number of listings. It's based on how good your shop is, you know, your how good your reviews, if everything's filled in okay. So no, it's not going to hurt you, but the new listings that you create are not going to have any listing quality score because nobody's interacted with them yet. It's just making a new new listing. But no, it's not it's not going to tank your shop. You are not penalized for creating new listings. Yeah, but new listings they start at zero. It doesn't it doesn't move the whole history behind them over. It's literally just so that you don't have to recreate it manually, which takes time. Exactly. So yeah, don't be afraid to if you can and Etsy is advising us to have a gift section if it works for you, absolutely don't see why not to do it. It, it could be a nice thing, as, as we mentioned earlier, if buyers are looking for gifts and you have a bit that says, hey, here's a gift section. You know, as, as we said, well, Eats is about to be hopefully bringing in a whole load of new buyers that aren't very Eatsy savvy and just want easy click the button for the gift. So if we give them a click the button for the gift, then hopefully that helps. Exactly. Um, oh, here's a good one. I'd, I've seen this. This is an Eatsy test. Um, I've seen listings that post a last picture that has a bunch of keywords on it. What is that? Does that help? The shop's not doing that. Eatsy's doing that. Um, it's a t I've only seen it a couple of times. I don't know if you've seen it, Brian. When you go through all the photos, like Eatsy puts in like an 11th photo that's basically, here's some other ideas you might like. Um, like a related people... search type situation? Yeah, that's it, so exactly. Instead of just having that at the bottom underneath all, the, all of the listing information, it's now in the image section? Yep. Like... It's a very limited test. I've only seen it a couple of times and people didn't like it <laughs> um I can't imagine so <laughs> <laughs> yes um but yes that whether it helps anything or not is something that we'll find out if Eatsy rolls this out to more people this is just them testing to see basically as far as i can tell and it sort of makes sense if someone's in your listing and they've scrolled through all the images and they're still not quite hitting the button yet they're still not ready to buy maybe giving them some extra options it's not good for you as the seller because that will take them to other search terms that might take them to other shops but Etsy as a whole it's more likely to keep the person to get a sale maybe so yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but it also works the other way. So while people could be on your listing and end up being pushed to a different listing, someone could be on someone else's listing and push to your listing. Exactly. That's what it, when people are kicking off with the similar items at the bottom, that's what I say. There's, there's only one of me that can be pushing people to other listings, but there's thousands of them that can be pushing to me because... Um, I don't think there's anywhere you can see. I haven't noticed where you can see if people are bringing you in, but just as a random aside on YouTube, you can see your biggest traffic often comes from suggested, which is people who've watched one video are suggested another video. So, you know, it's a good thing on, on places. So yeah, don't fear it. Um, it it's, it's a, it's a con, but it's also a pro at the same time. Exactly. And there's nothing we can do about it. Gotcha. Um, I mean, you can submit it yeah. back to Etsy if you like or don't like something. What they do about it really has more to do with their numbers. If they're seeing that a lot of people are using that and then making a purchase, it's going to become a very common thing. If, if, if it doesn't lead to extra sales or people aren't buying that thing that they're clicking to, it'll be gone in a minute. Yep. So we've got two more questions and then that'll be us on the hour. So um, 
I have zipper charms and stitch markers, both the same item. Should I list twice? Yep. If people search, why not? I don't know. Are, are those the same items or the, it's just the same item, same kind of picture or something that's on those items? Zipper no, the a zipper charm can be a stitch marker, basically. It could be used for the same thing you know the same item could be used in two different places okay but i imagine so. they're two for, for different target audiences so that way you get a whole yeah. other set of tags you can show it um as the use so it's zipper charm i imagine that's like attached to a zipper you would show it on a zipper versus a stitch marker i don't know what that's used for but you would show it in in that usage as your main image so it actually looks like two completely different images so or, or two completely different items so you might as well yeah, I know exactly what it is because I'm learning to crochet just now. <laughs> and it's where you go, I can't count to 20 when I'm watching the tally, so I'll put a little charm here and I'll know when I got to 20. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, I believe, like, when I say I'm learning to crochet, I saw a shawl that looked really cool. I've never crocheted before. So, yeah, you pick the most complicated thing with the expensive yarn and just go for it. So it's going to be interesting. Um, and the You're going to final do that live, right? You're going to do a live with that? A Sunday live? The <laughs> How much swearing do you like to hear? <laughs> and also, um, what it makes is beautiful, but crocheting and knit well, some people do really great with lives, but for me, it's like doing the same thing again and again and again. <laughs> Um, final question anyway should we put links to other listings in our own descriptions no. or at least yeah. uh, so not everyone wants to do that I personally love doing that um, you can link to shop sections so you can say if you like this item check out all these other items and link to the shop section um, if you have garden planters or something like that and you have a whole bunch of them point to the gardens and check out my garden center see what other items go with this if if it's something that might be bundled and you don't want to use the variations to do so, you could say this this particular item pairs really well with this. Since Etsy doesn't allow in the cart to, to have add-ons and bundles and that type of thing, you might as well use every place you have. People don't necessarily read the descriptions that much, but when they do, it's great to have a link there to your other products. And because it's within Etsy, it's clickable. If it's pushing off of Etsy to your socials or anything, it's not actually a clickable link. If it stays on Etsy, it is a clickable link. So you could be sending them to other products that are similar or to the sections or just anything you want. It's great. Yes, that exactly. Those are the only kind of links that I would personally add in my descriptions. As Brian says, other off-site links aren't clickable anyway. But in my opinion, if you add too many calls to action, it's like if someone's in a listing and you say, here, sign up for my mailing list and you'll get this. And and the people have to go, well, copy and paste this, click on it, sign up to this, come right. You've taken them away when you just want them to go, bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, do the complicated call to actions afterwards. But at at the minute. Like a needle felted schnauzer. And you're like, if you want to, if, if that's not the breed of dog you're looking for, check out the other breeds and then link to your other needle felted dogs. That's a perfect use for it because that means the person's not necessarily looking for what for, for the listing they're on, but here's other ones that you might be interested in. It's a great exactly. Um, just going to quickly grab this last one. I did say the last one was the last one, but this is a nice, easy one. Trying to set up Google Analytics. I'm using my HP laptop. The choices are web, Android, and iOS. Which one? Web. Um, Google Analytics for our Etsy shops. Can't look at Android or iOS. This is not what device you're on. It's what device people are searching for your shop in your shop on. And we can only use web just now. Um, and an HP laptop would be Windows. Or it could be a Chromebook, I guess. But that's still Chrome. That's not Android. So either way, it's it's web. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, guys. Um, to everyone who made it here to Facebook, thank you so much for sticking with us. Sorry about the technical again. I wish there was something I could do about it, apart from get cross. Um, and Brian, thank you so much for 
for covering <laughs> covering for Starla. Always good to have you on. Always nice change. She gets the take um, though, so she's the real winner here. That's true. I know Starla's having a party with her kid out, which is love you, Brian, but that sounds more fun. Here there's so. cake and ice cream and just like she's not sending us any. Starla. Right? Oh, so selfish. <laughs> yeah. cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks and for joining we'll us. And we'll see you next week. Time. Bye.